Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with an Exodia deck. For uh, some reason, people wanted to uh, suggest this to me, and it was something that was suggested a long time ago when these cards were originally, uh, were originally spoiled. And I've definitely got a couple of different variants, because I do believe the legendary Exodia Incarnate, this card, that is only listed as Summon Lord Exodia on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, is uh, definitely just an incredibly powerful card, and I kind of like how it sort of changes the demographic of how the Exodia deck is meant to operate, although it probably is not the best that it could be. But this is a deck list that is uh, one of the couple that I have lying around. This one is more based off of builds that I've seen online through different YouTube channels and different uh, and different like just things and posts online. Uh, it seems to be the weaker of the two that I have at my disposal, so this is why I'm playing with it first. And I'll probably play with my uh, with my own personal build that I've tried out myself and kind of tweaked around myself tomorrow or a future day just to maybe spread the videos out. But basically the entire purpose of this deck is you put the legendary Exodia Incarnate on the board and you try to put the Exodia pieces in the graveyard to add them back to your hand off of legendary Exodia or Dark Factory Mass Production. And then you just have the amazing, amazing trap card Obliterate to allow you to fuel your graveyard with Exodia pieces, as well as, you know, recur your Exodia pieces if it goes to graveyard. And you really the only way that it gets sent to graveyard is through Magic Planter, which is run as the one of Soul Charge is in here for the cheesy tech card, and then Thunder Dragons are in here because they have amazing interactions with uh, giving you extra cards for hand destruction and dark and dark world dealings. And there's literally only two extra deck cards because you only use the extra deck when you soul charge two Thunder Dragons back and you make a Pleiades. And then you can also just put uh, Ptolemy on top of it to add back your legendary Exodia Incarnate if it uh, if it comes up, if that is the case. But regardless, uh, like I said, I think this is the weaker of the decks. Uh, this is more based off of online things that I've seen. Uh, but my own build is probably something that I will play in the near future if that is something you guys want. If you want to see my own personal build of this deck uh, and want to see me playing it, then definitely like this video to show your support and show that that's what you want to see. But other than that, let's not waste any more time here. Let us just jump straight into the first game and see how this deck actually functions and see if it can actually uh, even really do anything. Because, I don't know, it seems really, really linear and probably lackluster. Probably just about as lackluster as the Sacred Beast deck, but let's jump into the first game and let's see. Alright, so going into the first game, I get to start, and my opening hand is fairly alright with a Reckless, a Wabaku, and a card card to draw more cards. It definitely doesn't put Legendary Exodia Incarnate on the board, but I mean, it's at least it's a start, right? But I'm playing against Blue Eyes for this video because it seems like a very, like, interesting, like, sort of callback, iconic, like, callback, because in the show, Exodia was what basically won Yugi the game against Kaiba in the episode in the first episode of the original series and so I just I felt like it was a really neat like in like sort of thing to play against Blue Eyes also Blue Eyes is probably the only matchup that this deck will probably be at least decent against because of the fact that every other matchup is stuff like uh, Metal Foes and ABC where they're just gonna banish your Exodia pieces on summon and then Metal Foes is going to just you know remove them from the board with uh, like an Ori Hulk play to send it to grave so it's very much, this is the deck that probably doesn't facilitate you interrupting your legendary Exodia Incarnate summon uh, the most, and so that's why I kind of really wanted to play against it, so I asked my recording partner here to play Blue Eyes and to just play whatever build of it he wanted, and so basically, I'm getting the shaft. Um, just, to, uh, just to preface, look at this board, look at what's going on, I get Cyber Dragon Infinity, and this just starts going really far downhill from there. He makes a Crystal Wing here. And Crystal Wing is interesting because that card 100% outs Legendary Exodia any time it's on the board with any attack gain because Crystal Wing will just gain the attack of Legendary Exodia and will out the card. It will kill it. So even though Legendary Exodia is unaffected by all other card effects, Crystal Wing is just a very, very hard counter to the card. And so... At this point, I'm just getting absolutely shafted. I'm getting absolutely diddled by all these Blue Eyes cards. I believe a Soul Charge was involved during this game, and there's not really anything I can do. So I just scoop after I draw the Hand Destruction with only one other card in hand. So, as you can tell, there's probably not going to be a lot of actual gameplay discussion. Because uh, this is just a very simple-minded deck. It just does one or two actions per turn. 
And like you see here, I open with three sets and a Curry Bandit, and that's pretty good. Wabaku Double Reckless Greed, that's that's pretty cool. I've got the Soul Charge, but I have nothing to really use with it, and I take the Hand Destruction. At least I think I took the Hand Destruction. I took either the Soul Charge or the Hand Destruction. I mean, it's pretty easy to narrow it down. Um, but so he gets to go, and he gets to go Sage, Alternative, into Cyber Dragon Nova off of Galaxy Soldier. It's just, it's bad. It's just so bad. But I flip my Wabaku when he makes Nova so I don't just like die this turn. And so during the end phase, he uses Stone to summon the Dragon Spirit of White out of his deck and targets one of my Recklesses to banish it, forcing me to activate it, which gets negated by Infinity so my Reckless doesn't resolve. And then next turn, I just, I have to play through the Infinity, meaning I'm playing with one less card. And it's just, ultimately doesn't really end well for me. I try to Soul Charge uh, to make like a Pleiades after I baited the Infinity and did all that. But that's a blue eye Spirit Dragon on the board, so I can only summon one monster at a time. I can't summon two or more. So the Soul Charge only goes for one. So uh, have to just scoop there. But going into the next game, I open with a Curry Bandit and a set. The set, um, I can't remember what exactly the set is, but I'm pretty sure that it isn't anything relevant against this onslaught of cards that my opponent has at his disposal. Um, oh, it was a Concealing Sword, or a Spiritual Sword, so that would have been really nice, but it gets banished off of the Dragon Spirit of White, and here comes another Cyber Dragon Infinity play. <laughs> here it comes again, sucking up his own Sage to clear space, making a Dark Matter so he can fuel his graveyard for the Soul Charge that's in his hand, and oh my goodness. And the only reason he Soul Charges here instead of going for the kill is that I believe I one day have pieced him, which ultimately gave him an extra card as well. So he just makes Crystal Wing, Dark Matter, Infinity, and gets a Dragon Spirit of White off the stone in the end phase, and so basically it's just it's just a really strong position for him. No if, ands, or buts. He's got two negations. One of them negates anything, and then one of them is a negation for monster effects, and also is, as I've already said, the hard counter to Legendary Exodia. Because it's just going to gain the attack boost of whatever it has and just punch over it no matter what happens. And so I take a lot of damage here because he's able to force through game under uh, under my uh, under my stuff. But even if the obliterate resolved, it still would have been game. There was literally no card I could remove from the board to stop game from happening. So going into the next game, I start with at least a good string of like draw cards here, and that's actually you know, cool. Being able to Dark Factory to make the uh, Dark World dealings live, and finally drawing into a Legendary Exodia Incarnate and being able to put it on the board, but I'm backing it up with Obliterate, but it's still only at a thousand attacks. So I'm like, hopefully my opponent can't do a lot during his turn, but he starts off going with Dragon Spirit of White. After he was able to hand correct off of my draw cards because of Dark World dealings and um, and hand destruction, and he's able to use Dragon Spirit of White to banish. My, uh, my Obliterate, and then he's able to attack over my Legendary Exodia. I draw a card off of its effect, and then ultimately I'm just like, I got, I've got, i got to like survive now, because my boss monster was outed because of how weak it was because of the way this deck is currently built, um, and that's, that's a bit of an issue, is the fact that the Exodia pieces are not at multiple copies, meaning you can't put lots of them in Grave, but I mean, I mean they're at one for a reason. A very big reason, but anyway, I draw into another legendary Exodia incarnate, so I go to summon my leg to special summon my Exodia, and he flips emptiness, so I just scoop and go to the next game. So, last game, I've gone first all of these games because I lost the four previous games, and so huh, just nothing I can really do about it, but I, at least I open with a hand that actually can like combo up into draw cards this time, and I'm able to resolve a soul charge off Thunder Dragons and the Exodia Head, summoning Legendary Exodia Incarnate, making a Pleiades for protection, and then Normal Summon Curry Bandit and resolving it. And I end up milling two Exodia pieces off the Curry Bandit and getting an Obliterate to my hand, which is actually just really strong, probably the strongest I could ever have hoped for. But my opponent, again, got to hand correct a lot because of my cards that I activated. I activated like two Dark World Dealings, at least, and a hand destruction in, the, in my own turn, and so he was able to do those things and actually correct his hand without losing cards, whereas I was losing cards off almost every activation. But, so he gets rid of my Pleiades, and I am not really capable of just doing anything. He uses a, he uses Return of the Dragon Lords to banish, to protect his blue eyes when he crashes into my Exodia. I draw cards, and it's, it's just, it's really easy to out a card that just has weak attack, even though it is unaffected by all other card effects, it seems. Uh, but so a one day of peace was activated, so he can't kill me this turn, so I guess that's good. And so I've got obliterate down, and so I use obliterate 
with the uh, with the um, magic planter. And now the galaxy soldier was summoned, but he actually banished the other two galaxy soldiers off of his pot of desires. So thank God, or else I'd be facing an infinity right now too. There'd be an infinity on his side of the board. So. Like, that's the only reason that uh, Galaxy Soldier is chilling there. But, so he tries to flip Emptiness when I normal summon my head, but he left Galaxy Soldier in defense mode, so I just punch over the head, turning off Emptiness and putting my legendary Exodia on the board. And so, from here, I've got Dark Factory and I've got a limb back in my hand. And I think I've got a Reckless face down. And I add the head back, and my Curry Bandit got Veilered, so it's a bit unfortunate, but he has Crystal Wing on the board. And no, is that a... Yeah, okay, so it was a Reckless. I was like, I'm pretty sure there was a Wabaku at some point. Um, but maybe I'm just thinking of another game, but Crystal Wing just hard outs the legendary Exodia. I tried a Reckless to draw into uh, Battle Fader, but I need to draw into multiple Battle Faders because of the fact that the Crystal Wing is just going to negate one of them. And so he doesn't even negate my uh, legendary Exodia with Crystal Wing for the fear that I could have something like Scarecrow or Battle Fader in my hand already. So he just lets me draw the cards, I draw Fader off of it. But it gets negated by the Crystal Wing, and so he's just able to punch through for games. So, yet another video of me playing something that at least looks interesting on paper, but I ultimately end up getting 5 owed by basically a meta deck. I mean, Blue Eyes is definitely not what I would consider the best of the meta decks, but it's definitely one of the more fun ones to play because of just how the mechanics operate with it. But, still, whatever. Like, this deck is, uh, this deck is a, is kind of a pile of heaping garbage. <laughs> The new cards are great though, it's just, it's the exact same polar, like, opposite of, like, not even the polar opposite, it's the exact same polarization of what is going on with the Sacred Beast deck that I tried to play, is that the new cards are amazing, but they're at least 10 years too late, so that's the issue. But the new Exodia cards are great, with Obliterate and Legendary Exodia Incarnate, like, the deck is incredible in terms of how it looks on paper because of the way that this boss monster functions and the way that this trap card fuels your boss monster and your game plan. It just seems really cool. But ultimately, it just seems like it's a problem. But like I said, if you want to see my own personal build get played and hopefully have a better success rate than this one, definitely like this video and give it a thumbs up and show your support. But other than that, if you want to keep seeing me get slaughtered, then also support the video by giving it a like. <laughs> Basically, if you want to keep seeing me lose like a bastard, then, uh, then support the video because I'll know that this is one of the things that you like. You like me playing more interesting things, but absolutely just getting thrown into the ground while playing them. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. And if you like this video, definitely be sure to like and subscribe, as I'm pretty sure I've already said. It helps me out a ton, and it helps the channel and community within it grow. Check out links that are on the screen, and maybe go check out my channel itself to find more videos you might like. There's a thousand plus videos over there, so if you can't find something else you also like, I would be incredibly surprised. It would definitely definitely shock me if out of a thousand videos you couldn't find at least one other one that you liked and watch but as i already said thanks for watching thank you for your time as usual and as always guys take care see you in the next video